Adventure family. Today, the Fun Adventure family is showing you how to take your master bedroom and turn it into a bunk room. We've been full-timing in this 1990 Winnebago Chieftain for a little more than two years. Uh, initially, when we set off, it was just us two adults and the two kiddos, and we actually turned that queen into a family bed by putting storage totes on either side and additional cushions. And then we had our third adventure kiddo join in the ranks and eventually the two big kids moved out into the living room beds and we co-slept with him. But now that he's getting bigger, it's finally time to set up a space just for the kids. And it's actually been done for about a week now. And I can say that this has been the best renovation that we have done in this poor old RV. Just, I cannot tell you how awesome it is for the kids to have their own space. So you can see here, he's using his fancy schmancy $17 Walmart drill, which we highly recommend if you have to purchase a drill and keep this a really tight budgeted thing. Uh, he's pulling out all of the bracketing and that center bar. And if your bed doesn't have the center bar, then you're just gonna have to karate chop it like an RV ninja. <laughs> I'm kidding. But yeah, so um, we had all that storage space down there and we actually weren't using anything um, that was down there except for a couple of space heaters which are already out and in use now because it's fall. So we just have to find a new home for them. Um, but for the past week or so before this renovation job was done, we had cleared everything out and the tools that we were going to use were being kept underneath there. There's also our fresh water underneath of there and what's that thing called? The engine heater device thing. Yeah. The engine heater works, I guess, off of the engine to warm up the back room while you're driving down the road. Uh, we don't feel like that is uh, a terribly useful thing for us to use and since we want the children to have as much floor space as possible to play in that's just coming right out so you can see he's still working on the framing and now we're moving on to the heater so he says to check the heater hose lines for removal uh, make sure you drain all of that radiator stuff drain the radiator before removal there's still going to be some in the hoses um, so he says to have an old towel handy which you can see now he's frantically running around to go get one I think <laughs> I know that happens in a bit I'm sorry about all the flashing we're using the dragon touch we call it a faux pro a fake GoPro um, and obviously it's not the most ideal recording device and we're going to have to upgrade real soon if we're going to keep making YouTube videos. Um, but yes, now you can see he is removing those hoses. Um, he says to make sure to remove the engine heater coil and the blower motor. So we'll be seeing him do that in a little bit. Um, I'm reading notes while we do this because I honestly have, I didn't participate in the um, renovation at all, <laughs> but uh, Dorky Adventure Dad doesn't love the sound of his voice on the video, and frankly, I don't love the sound of my voice on video either, but I figured this was the least I could do um, since he did so much work. Uh, obviously, you can see it sped up um, to be about a 15 minute video, but the whole project took six hours. And again, it was really important for that to happen in a day since we live in the RV. Let's see, there he's removing those hoses still. Whoop, there it went. <laughs> if you have any questions about how to remove the hoses and the heater or anything else that might be underneath your old master bed. Go ahead and leave the comments or the questions in the comment section. 
because like I said we're, we try really hard to keep up with the questions here on our YouTube channel. Oh now he's rerouting the fresh water overflow line from our fresh water tank that was previously going out into the center of the room. And if you are a professional YouTuber or know anything about YouTube, maybe you can give us some tips on how to keep up with the comments that come because for some reason I cannot get notifications when somebody leaves a comment in our videos. So we have to like patrol our videos to see if anybody's leaving any comments. So if you know about that, <laughs> go ahead and tell us in the comment section. Hopefully we'll get it. Um, again, sorry about the angle. Uh, we are definitely not professionals, just doing our best to share our trip and journey and renovations with y'all. Uh, right now he is removing the carpeting off the wall. The carpet went up the wall on the opposite side like you can see in the video on the wall across there. Um, he says to remove any wire brackets for carpet removal and to remove the carpet by cutting it into manageable um, sections like two to three feet wide with a sharp utility blade. That uh, brand new utility blade that, blade that he's using was also figured into our budget. So like just so you know, like I get so annoyed whenever I see videos that say do this for X amount of money, but they're assuming you have all the tools that's not us. We had to buy everything because RV life. <laughs> oh, also, uh, we lost a large chunk of video. Apparently, the faux pro, aka Dragon Touch, died, and of course, Dorky Adventure Dad is working really hard to get this done as quickly as possible. Didn't notice. So, in a minute, it's going to like flash forward to where the carpet is completely removed and the floor is installed and he has a little bit of the bed set up already but thankfully we noticed that the video was cut off before he completed the project so you'll be able to see him continuing to work after that point. He says to remove any sealant or debris that is raised on the flooring and cutting out the heater pipes from the floor, be sure to reroute the coolant hoses from the engine block so that we don't have an engine sealant leak. And after he does that, you'll see the blip. So the two by fours were screwed into the wall underneath of the back window above the fresh water tank. And then he placed the plywood on top of it. And uh, the two by fours were, oh, there he is. <laughs> The floor looks great though. We went with a cheap peel and stick. Uh, we figured, you know, three kids back there, accidents are bound to happen, they're wild. Uh, so we wanted to get something that was really affordable that could be easily replaced if something got screwed up. Uh, but as you can see, he's got those two by fours. They're actually screwed into the two by fours, the support beams inside the RV. He purchased brackets to keep it from tipping over, but those weren't necessary at all. And also you can see that the two by four in the front goes through the plywood at the day bed. Um, kind of just puzzled it out together as he was going to make it work. We're gonna include the exact measurements of the bed and the day bed, uh, the bunk beds and the day bed, so that way you can see how big our beds were. Uh, the queen mattress that we had was a foam mattress and he cut it up and it was perfect. Like we could not have planned it to be more perfect perfect for the two bucks in the day bed. There was no leftover, there was no gap, it was just perfect. So we'll include those measurements so hopefully that will work out for you. Here he is removing the sconces that we put up when it was the adult bedroom, I wanted it to be kind of like an adulty oasis and look kind of fancy schmancy, but honestly we never spent any time back there. Like, yeah, we went back there to sleep, but it wasn't like an adulty hangout, like we have three kids, so uh, I didn't miss the sconces going. He says to 
uh, remove the light fixtures, uh, tape up the wires, and replace with solid wall plates to cover them up, keep your kiddos safe. Um, you'll also want to screw those into the uh, studs for stability. And what else? I'm reading over the notes. Measure the height of both sides of the railing to make sure you're level before mounting. That's really important. Uh, definitely don't want any kids rolling out while you're driving down the road. <laughs> So that 2x4 actually went across the cabinetry. We pulled out the drawers and the cabinets to keep that space open and usable. Uh, the top shelf of the cabinet acts as a nightstand for the top bunk and the bottom shelf does for the bottom bunk. It worked out really well. They can put their cabs, books, and uh, we got a couple of the press lights from the Dollar Tree in there for the kids. But if the 2x4 doesn't go across the button that turns the actual light on and off, you'll want to cut the wires. Especially if you boondock, you don't want lights on uh, using up your energy and stuff. Thank you for joining us on this amazing journey. We hope you found this video helpful. We'll see you out there.